Grassfed versus grain-fed butter. With Kerrygold being so popular over the past few years, and uh, I mean, I'm sure a lot of you guys have also seen Finlandia butter and other various imported European butters in the supermarket. We have to kind of answer the question of grass-fed versus grain-fed, and just this kind of applies in every topic of grass-fed versus grain-fed. In you know, butter applies to all other aspects of dairy. It also applies to all other aspects of even just beef fat from an animal. The quality of the pasture will indicate the vitamin content. So. The reason we see the grass butter is a little bit more yellow and has a, almost a nutty grassy taste to it is because the vitamins in the grass that those cows are eating are substantially higher than the vitamins that the cows are getting on their normal feed. And the vitamins we're specifically talking about, grass is very rich in carotenoids, beta carotene, which is converted to vitamin A in the form of retinol in animals. And grass is very, very rich in vitamin K, which animals convert to the form of vitamin K2. And that animal form of retinol and K2 in animal form in animals, what we eat is, are the nutrients that we need to, to be optimal. And those are really two of the core building blocks of nutrition in humans with the addition of vitamin D3, which is obtained from the sun, and small amounts of other fat soluble vitamins, of course, in addition to omega-3 fatty acids. Uh, I always, for some reason, I always seem to forget to mention it first. The main reason we're eating grass-fed is because of the drastically increased omega-3 amount as well as the better omega-3 to omega-6 ratio. So without further ado, I have three butters here today. I have our regular conventional salted butter from the supermarket and I have our supermarket salted grass-fed butter and I have some unsalted cow butter that I added some salt to just to have the same level of salt when I taste them. And the reason I don't buy unsalted butter from the supermarket is because it's like rancid. If you're going to buy butter from a supermarket, you have to buy salted because they, didn't cult they don't culture it properly in America and it just has this off rancidity to it. The salt helps preserve it a little bit. Uh, anyway, let's, uh, so let's look at these. So this is the, as you, obviously this is the grain fed conventional butter. This is the Kerrygold butter and this is the the raw butter from a, a local farm and yeah it's it's interesting to see that it goes from white to yellow to darker yellow as as if the vitamin content was increasing so so we know for sure that this grain fed butter has no real significant source of vitamins although it's a good source of calories the Kerrygold butter we can say there's a slightly higher carotenoid and vitamin K amount but how high can we really say and this raw butter I just got from cows that are now on spring and summer grasses, we should be safe to say that this is pretty much whatever optimal amount of vitamin A and K content could be in the animals because it's, it's the ideal time of year to be eating this food. So from a nutrient content, this is without a doubt healthier and without a doubt what we should be striving for. And if you cannot get access to this type of butter but still want to get butter in your diet, you could supplement cod liver oil, you can supplement vitamin K2, you could eat wild caught fish, eat some liver, eat other foods to supplement these vitamins. But by having the vitamin content that high in just a basic food like this, you don't have to do those other things. And I, I'm going to spit this butter out because I'm allergic to it. Not, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna, this, this conventional butter and this Kerrygold butter is rancid and it's been, it's been pasteurized, it's probably been sitting on the shelf for months, this cow was probably milked months ago. This will definitely cause cystic acne for me and some bad inflammatory reactions, so I don't want to actually consume it. The raw butter, yeah, I'm fine with consuming it, so, but without further ado, this is the grain-fed butter. It has, obviously, that butter taste, the taste that everyone recognizes with butter, but it has this slight rancidity and it's very overpoweringly salty. All I taste on that butter is salt. I'm gonna try the Kerrygold butter. Again, very overpoweringly salty. And there is less of that rancidity. Still a very prominent butter flavor though. And I don't really taste any slight grassiness or anything. Now we're gonna have the, the raw grass fed butter. Uh, I just put a little salt on. So when I was eating that butter when it was unsalted, I didn't really get a lot of the buttery flavor. So that unsalted raw butter that I added a little salt to, it still has a slight butter flavor, but there's also very prominent flavors of like hay and like a barnyardy flavor with grass, as well as 
since it's a cultured butter, it has that slight sour cultured flavor that actually adds to the flavor of the butter, so it's, it's very tasty. So from a taste perspective, most people might actually like the Kerrygold butter more than the raw butter from the farm. But without a doubt, the Kerrygold tastes better than the conventionally raised butter. Uh, some people might, like in, in, my, in my head right now, there's no way that someone would like regular conventional butter over grass-fed butter, Kerrygold. In the case of raw butter from a farm that I bought, that barnyardy grassy flavor, it turns it into its own food, you know. When people think of butter, they don't think of something you could eat on its own that has its own flavor notes. But it really transforms it dramatically and to a point where I think it's, it's in that realm of people that don't like grass-fed beef because they think it's gamey, it's because they haven't had good grass-fed beef. Yes, there are a lot of raw dairy products and raw grass-fed dairy products that you get locally that might have a slightly negative barnyardy hay flavor, but there's also plenty of good versions of those foods that are ultimately the tastiest as well as the best for you. So, pros and cons, I mean, taste-wise, we know, I, I went over that, we know vitamin-wise what's better, and it's really a matter of a trade-off of can you afford to spend, you know, $12 a pound on raw butter, do you have access to it, and do you even want to incorporate it into your diet? And my answer is honestly no, because I can buy trim fat or bone marrow for much cheaper prices, and for me that's much less inflammatory, it's easier for me to access, and I don't have to really worry about the vitamin content if I'm buying, you know, high quality grass fed beef that has, you know, the, the quality still might matter there, but I'm not as worried about it because it's less in my control about trying to source you know where the butter is coming from and how fresh it is. So grass-fed butter, uh, I mean any, any local supermarket probably even Costco probably has it, the Kerrygold. Raw butter, realmilk.com, eatwild.com, check out your local farmers markets as well but that, that might be a bit difficult to find for most people.